morning and welcome to Daily Hope. This morning we're talking about the tradition of the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree custom was developed during the Renaissance in Germany where Protestant Christians, including Martin Luther, brought decorated trees into their homes. The tree was traditionally decorated with roses made of colored paper, uh, apples, wafers, tinsel, and sweet meats. It was the Moravian Christians who began to illuminate Christmas trees with candles, which were ultimately replaced by Christmas lights after the advent of electrification. An angel or a star might be placed at the top of the tree to represent the angel Gabriel and the star of Bethlehem. The use of evergreen trees, wreaths, and garlands to symbolize eternal life was a custom of the ancient Egyptians, the Chinese, and even the Hebrews. Tree worship was common among the pagan Europeans and survived their conversion to Christianity in order to scare away the devil. And during the Roman midwinter festival of Saturnalia, houses were decorated with wreaths of evergreen plants along with other customs now associated with Christmas. The Christmas tree tradition was introduced into North America in the winter of 1781 by the commanding general of Hessian soldiers and his wife in the province of Quebec. And they held a Christmas party for their officers and their guests delighted in the fir tree decorated with candles and fruits. Medieval mystery plays decorated a tree to represent the paradise of Eden and these plays about the fall ended with the promise of the Messiah and were often performed prior to the Christmas season with its stories of the nativity. And in such plays, a tree decorated with apples to represent the forbidden fruit and with wafers to represent the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper and its redemption was used as a setting for the play. The apples were later replaced by round objects such as shiny, shiny red balls. The tree is thus a symbol of God's gift of life from Genesis to Revelation, from creation to the New Jerusalem. The tree cannot be rejected as a purely pagan symbol, for God does not reject it in Scripture. It has a very direct link with God's providential salvation message. And though secularized in essential, the essential meaning of the Christmas tree is still one of life in terms of the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's decorated to represent the beauty of God's gracious gift and fruits were long used as decorations and represented the bountiful blessings that fulfilled mankind's basic needs. The star or the angel atop the tree represents the miraculous nature of God's new tree of life, Jesus Christ and his cross. All of Christmas has been profanely secularized, but it's not the use of the tree that's to blame. It's long usage as part of the Christian tradition and the Christmas tradition and celebration represents the fact that the past generations following John's revelation reclaimed its use. They took dominion of that symbol for Jesus Christ. And the problem with our modern celebration of Christmas is not its close association with the tree of life, but its increasing separation from the new tree of life, Christ incarnate. God redeems man and regenerates his heart to serve him. And we then ought to conform our thinking and our customs to his service. The Apostle Paul gives us the beautiful prescription for our celebration of Christmas, Christmas as he writes to the Corinthians, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And to the Colossians he said, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If we shed as unholy everything that has been used by evil men, 
We will be in constant retreat and surrender. We must reclaim our thoughts, our action, our institutions, and our customs for Christ, because he is the King and Lord of all. And rather than reject the Christmas tree for its past association with paganism, we should glorify God that it has, in the modern mind, been linked exclusively to the celebration of Christmas. And now the church's work is to reclaim Christmas from its secularization to its true purpose, a celebration of Jesus Christ and his advent. And my thanks to Mark Rushdoni for his excellent article found in calcedon.edu. So continue the traditions, decorate and light the tree, sing the carols with all of your heart, marvel in the mystery that God became a baby to die for our sins and lead us home. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. So pray with me. Father, help us to make the most of every opportunity this Christmas and make much about you through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit in all our celebration. It's all about Jesus. It's all about you, Lord, for your glory and fame. Amen. So I'll see you this Friday for the Carols by Candlelight and this Sunday at one of our gatherings on the campus. Invite a friend or friends to join you as we marvel in the majesty of the season. Merry Christmas.